Hello everyone and welcome for this new video. In this one we are going to talk about blending and especially one of the greatest difficulty that beginners face when they want to blend with oil paint. So this question came from Patreon. Jennifer on Patreon asked me to talk about blending. It's not only from this question because I've been doing these videos for years and people have been uh, telling me what they struggle with. The number one difficulty when it comes to blending is how to control the shapes, how to keep the edges accurate when blending. And this is the number one difficulty that most beginners have. If you have this difficulty, let me reassure you, this is normal and like with time and experience it will come. But a couple of things can make your life easier and I'm gonna try to cover them in this video. So the first thing that will affect the blending is the surface. So we, we talk about the grain and we say that a surface needs to have some tooth. Basically think that a surface has microscopic peaks and valleys and that well if you have a lot of paint it's going to cover everything if you don't have a lot of paint in your brush then you are going to see all the peaks which create this uh, very specific canvas texture the main element is the consistency of the paint so well, this is where the very complicated things uh, start because, well, there's no way to tell you exactly what's the right consistency. You have to figure it out for yourself. Some people might like paint that's a little bit stiff and that's uh, like like some sort of, of paste. Some people like paint that's more liquid, more fluid and well you've got to figure out what's your preference and for that I can't really tell you it's also something that you have to feel you have to experience it firsthand because I can describe however I want with words it's never going to be the same as just filling it at the tip of your brush but the general idea is if you put too much medium is going to make the paint too liquid or too slippery you also have to know that alkyd mediums or gel mediums have a tendency to make the paint slide a little bit so you really need to avoid excess if you want to keep things under control because it can get very slippery at some point so you can have two types of difficulties when it comes to the consistency of your paint you can on one hand feel that your paint is too slippery and that well you can't control the edges well in that case what I suggest is to use less medium use less liquid use less gel if you're using an alkyd medium use less of it and also if it's your very first layer just know that you can paint without any medium like straight out of the tube and well it's going to be a lot more stiff a lot more buttery but it will also give you more control in the beginning and maybe make your life easier you can control paint that's very fluid very slippery but it's a lot harder to do so using a, a, a paint that's uh, that feels more like a paste can make your life uh, a lot easier the second issue you can have is that you feel that the paint is too pasty, that it feels like impasto all the time and that it's uh, like it's hard to control, you, your brush really sort of gets stuck. Well, in that case, you need to add a little bit of medium. So you see, it's all about balance and there's no perfect thing that I can tell you which is going to help you figure this out. You've got to feel that for yourself. If you want an image, let's say that you have a, a paste, a heavy paste that's very stiff like butter on one side and a liquid that's very fluid and runny like milk. Basically you want something in between. You want something between a 
paste and a liquid. You want something with enough fluidity to flow well, but you don't want something too runny that would make it hard to control. I use little droppers like these and they really help because I can control exactly how much medium I put in my paint and it makes it easier to control the consistency that way, drop by drop. You have to know that I don't always use the same consistency throughout an entire painting. Sometimes I need a big paste and sometimes I need a paint that's more fluid and I sometimes change things around while I paint for the different layers. So it's something that you have to understand, that you have to keep under control and that you need to know how to make it evolve. Now, the third point is that not all paint, not all pigments are created equal. Transparent pigments will tend to behave more like a liquid because with not that many drops, they will immediately create a sort of a liquid. Opaque pigments will tend to behave more like paste, so you can add a decent amount of medium and they will still create an opaque thick layer and also you've got to know that the manufacturing process plays a huge role in how the, the in your ability to blend with the pigment let's take for instance two of the same components PR 101 which is iron oxide you can have it transparent or you can have it opaque and as you can see, they behave very differently. So of course, you're not going to blend the same way with an opaque PR101 and a transparent PR101. And finally, and this is why it's so complicated, is that the brushwork is also a key element in, in blending. And and this is this is a good sign because it means that well, whatever you're using in whatever medium, whatever paint you're using with your brushwork, you're going to be able to compensate for the effect and create exactly the type of blending that you want. The thing is that the, the size, the quality of your brush and also the, um, the, the angle and the swiftness of your gesture, this is all going to affect the blending process. So, First, the type of brush. So you've got hog bristles with a very good retention and a lot of spring. These brushes have a very dynamic touch. They have a, a lot of spring, so you can create visible brush marks. On the other hand, you have synthetic or sables, which are a lot softer uh, and, and generally uh, more round. They will generally create softer transitions, more blurry, and they will create a very nice soft touch. Now, the size is also a big factor. You can use big brushes to create the overall blending and try to always go for the biggest brushes at first and go from big to small. The big brushes could be used to blend from one side to the other. So it's you have your edge right here and you blend from one side with a big brush and then you blend from the other side and then from one side, from the other side, from one side, from the other side and you push back and forth, back and forth until you've got something that's very, um, that's very soft. If you're using smaller brushes, the approach is very different because with uh, a soft brush, well, you've got your edge here and with the brush, you're going to like cover the edge very, very softly with very soft pressure until the edge is not visible anymore. So the big brushes are more for the big picture and the smaller brushes are for the details and for the accuracy. And of course, you also have brushes that are specifically designed for blending. With these brushes, you would place flat areas of the two colors next to each other and then just swipe everything and blend everything. I already made a video about this and 
I don't really encourage to do that because, well, this will make things really out of control. These brushes are good if you want to remove the texture and remove some of the brush marks, but it's not a good strategy to rely on them too much for your blending. You should be able to blend with your regular brushes. And finally, the swiftness, the angle, the pressure of your brush. Everything you do from your, your shoulder all the way to your fingers, this all affects the way paint is going to behave. And like for that, this is where I can st stop talking really because you've got to figure this out with experience. There's no way to teach you, there's no specific technique. Painters hold their brushes however they want really. Uh, don't think that you have to always constantly use it like a pencil like this. You can use a, a big brush and blend like this or you can use a very soft brush and blend like this. I mean there's tons of variety in the pressure, the amount of paint that you have in your in your brush. All these things affect the blending. And the most important thing, and this is the one that you really want to remember, is you have to control exactly how much paint is there in your brush while you're doing your brush strokes. Do you pick up a lot of paint or do you pick up very little paint? This is one of the key elements in blending. For the, the big, thick layers, you want a lot of paint in your brush. But if you're doing just subtle glazes here and there, well, in that case, you want a very small quantity of paint. But you've got to understand exactly when you come back to your palette, exactly how much paint is there in your brush. You've got to know your brush, you've got to know how it behaves, you've got to know if a synthetic is the same as this one or this one. You need to understand your brushes really well and you need to put this in the perspective of all the other factors that I talked about. All right, this is very complicated fluid mechanics science, but if you spend enough time on your palette, if you spend enough time working and actually blending on your paintings, you will eventually figure it out. All people figure it out at some point. So it might be frustrating, it might be difficult, just keep going, keep painting and you will, you will somehow feel it like naturally. I can talk and talk and talk about these techniques. It's never going to be as efficient as you in front of your canvas with your palette blending and figuring this out for yourself. If you want to learn more about oil painting, you can check out my oil painting course. It's got great reviews. I'm really proud of it and it talks about all the all these aspects, the practical aspects, the technical aspects of oil painting and comes with two different demonstrations so that if you're not really happy with how I do things, you don't have to copy and imitate what I do and you can make and create your own process. So you can check it out. The link is in the description. If you want, you can also join me on Patreon where I give real-time videos behind the canvas, which is behind the scenes where I give you even more tips and tricks about oil painting, about drawing, and, um, and you get to suggest questions. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you for the next one. Until then, have fun painting and have fun drawing. Bye.